Actually, that's going to be hard to snap someone. Look at you meaningfully. Um, okay. Alors, euh, je. Bonjour. Je suis content de voir que c'est un grand groupe qui se rassemble. On fait la dégustation autrement aujourd'hui. Et euh, bah, déjà, je veux savoir si la majorité de vous vont être fâchés si je parle en anglais. Hein? Qui va être super fâché si je parle en anglais Que toi, bon sûr. Alors maintenant, je, je parle certainement en anglais. Anglais On m'entend. On m'entend. Pas Ouais. Ok. So. Um, we're gonna. Where did my pointer go? Where did my clicker go? She's gone. She's handing out books. It's cool. I'll do both. <laughs> All right. We're gonna talk about my two favorite things. <laughs> my two favorite things today. Meaningful look. because both of these happen with our mouths, but they use totally different parts of the brain. And I think there's a natural instinct to taste things, and eat things, and drink things, and there's a natural instinct to want to talk about them and communicate about it. But it's what's more interesting is the way these two things play together. And, and as everybody in this room knows, there's a really interesting interplay between tasting and talking in wine culture. Um, and if it, you all know what I'm talking about, the tasting world. Whenever we talk about wine, we, we end up just listing fruit comments. Uh, and it's, it's, it's bizarre, because if you ever actually talk, if you gave like an alien a bunch of tasting notes, they wouldn't know what wine is actually made of, because nobody ever says, it smells like grapes and slightly fermented. It's always a, a laundry list of other things. And um, you gotta wonder why that is. Uh, what, what are the limitations to wine communication that have resulted in this sort of eccentric format. But first of all, to prove it's an eccentric format, there's actually an American who went ahead and studied uh, one of one critic's 100 point scores uh, and, and did an analysis of what words he used most commonly. And it's interesting because out of the couple hundred 100 point wines he's ever rated, almost half of, more than half of them, have rich and then more intense, concentrate, spicy, long. And, and he ends up using the same vocabulary over and over to describe these wines, to the point where you realize we didn't even need to use those 12 words at all. As soon as you put 100 on it, we knew it was rich, unctuous, spicy, long. And it's, um, it's a bizarre and eccentric format. It deserves some looking at. Uh, and, and some people might think that this is a natural way to talk about wine, but if you look at how normal people actually describe wine, uh, this, is, this is from actual wine reviews of mine. The most commonly used words are taste like wine. Um, and, and that's accurate, because normal people say things like, this tasted like this, this wine was good, the bottle was not good. And so it's totally different language that we use in our wine communication. Um, when, mm, let's go ahead to the next. When uh, we're outsiders, the group basically is constituted of winemakers who aren't originally from the Langa, but came here by choice because we love the region, and uh, we tend to be a little weird because of that. And so it's, uh, it's good to question things, is, is a general philosophy in the group. And, uh, and that's why we want to question this tasting that style. Um, I think it finds its origins in, in printed media, uh, and the limitations of printed media. You've got column widths, you've got word limits, you've got just lots of lots of reasons that you can't do everything you want. You can't use normal sentences or, or actual grammar. You have to laundry list flavors and components. But what's odd is that that started infecting the way we actually think about wine. Where a lot of people who in, used to be normal wine drinkers who enjoyed a glass of wine, now go up to a glass and go, and then instead of thinking about it as a wine, they think about it as a list of descriptions that they can tell their friends or tweet about later. And that's unfortunate. We should instead realize, and the reason we're on the internet space, is that the internet gives us an amazing ability to eschew all of those limitations. There are no word limits, even image limits. Printing in color doesn't cost more. 
And what's more, there's also other multimedia, which allow us to do not just photo and lots of words, but we can start pairing music and describing it, or pairing wine and describing it with music, or movies, or any amount of cultural references, even software, and I will get into the scary nerd of me later on that topic. Um, I'd like to pretend that this is a revolutionary concept, but the fact is there are websites that have been doing this and authors who've been talking about wine in alternative ways, like with photos, for a long time. This is from a website called Chateau Petrogasm that encourages anybody on the internet can just come in and, and review a wine by uploading a picture. And so somebody said that this Pinot Noir tasted like Brad Pitt. Um, did somebody open it to say, ooh? <laughs> It's only $40, lady. Um, meaningful glance. Stop dreaming about Brad Pitt. You can see with Thurman Pino, too, if you're, you know, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, and then continue through here and about, you know, click every now and then. The, the point is that there's lots of, lots of very evocative images, and a picture can tell a thousand words, or even 10,000 if you pick the right picture. And so it's fun to, to try to think of these wines in alternative ways, and that's going to be what we focus on later. But let me devolve, de devolve a little bit first. Um, I've also had uh, some interesting experiences as well. I, I like to pay attention to when people talk about my wines on the internet, and to my surprise, uh, a Japanese guy, well, a guy living in Japan, had posted about my Mediterranean Mojo wine, and he posted a video of ACDC's Let There Be Rock. And he has an entire wine blog, and, and he's not the only one. There are lots of people who blog about wine in terms that we don't get used to seeing, because we're so used to talking to the journalists all the time. So it was really refreshing to be able to rock out and be like, yes, my mojo is ACDC. Um, and plus, it was a blog in Japanese, but I could understand what he meant, because I get music. <laughs> I did not just speak kanji. All right, this is the scary part. Because I'm a nerd, I also <laughs> developed some software that went through all the reviews people made of my wine to try to reinvent wine reviews verbally. And so these are made up words that my computer generated based on looking at real words that people used. <laughs> and I like some of them. Food, <laughs> perfectar. But no, you, you can, I think that there's an interactivity with all that we're doing now in science, art, and technology that can go and really expand the way we think about wine. And not just be gibberish, but also there are some more meaningful reviews, some which are very negative. Uh, these are totally computer generated. Uh, so a, a, a mindless machine told me these things about my wine just by looking at the grammar and deconstructing other wines. And what's scary and ironic is it actually kind of comes close to what actual wine reviews sound like. But uh, this one is remarkably similar to what people say about my wine. And it's a computer that came up with it. Um, these com this combination of words never appeared, more than three words next to each other never appeared in any of the reviews. They're all two word pairs that you could hear from. Anyway, we won't go too much into that. We'll go back to the easy baby steps with the pictures, because I don't want to scare everybody away. Um, so, um, we're going to do a tasting where we're going to encourage you to pick, describe our wines with photos. And because we're not on the internet right now, some of you are, I see phones, but most of us aren't on the internet, we've provided some pictures on the table and in your tasting book that we'll hand out. And we'd love it if you would just tell the winemaker what, what, what picture their wine reminds you of. And if you don't offend at least one of us, you're not doing it right. Um, with that, I'm going to give the phone to Louise, and she's going she's gonna to introduce the 10 winemakers. So loud, I, I, I can never be as loud as you. <laughs> 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 no, I was just yelling. <laughs> 